Today, we're taking various types of lubrication, throwing it outside in well below freezing temperatures just to see what happens. Hey guys, this is Dave with the Learning Firearms Channel. Thank you very much for checking out this video. This is our first video of 2016 and we're starting it off. Uh, right now we have a cold snap to take advantage of. It is really cold out. Actually, truth be told, it's not as cold as it was the other day. Uh, right now it is negative eight degrees. So we'll get a close up of that. That's according to Weatherbug. And the airport that it's pulling that data from is about, as the crow flies, probably seven, eight miles away from here. Uh, the temperature on the car actually said it was a little colder, so is it negative 8, is it negative 13, I don't know, but it's somewhere in there. So for official purposes sake, we'll just go with weather bug, negative 8. So math majors, that means it is 40 degrees colder than freezing. And in Minnesota in the winter, this is common. This is common for people who have to work in patrol. It may be common for uh, home defense situations where they have to store a gun, um, maybe in a garage or whatever it might be. But what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking about a lubrication freeze test is the patrol rifle, the rifle that sits outside in the trunk or sits in a rack and the car is turned off. You know, they don't have a heated garage. Maybe some departments or sheriff's office don't have a heated garage, so that car sits overnight with that rifle in the rack. And what actually happens to the lubricant? Now, this isn't a shooting test. This is just gonna be a freeze test. We're gonna pour all of these different types of lubes that I had on hand. We're gonna pour uh, the same amount into a little cup, and then we're gonna set them outside overnight, and we're gonna see what happens. Now, I'm pretty confident that even if the lubrication froze, that if it was on a bolt carrier or a slide of a gun, that the gun would still function. And if we get another cold snap, it's actually supposed to warm up in the next few days. But if we get another cold snap, I'd actually like to try that where we actually put an AR with different types of lube on it outside, we let it freeze and function check it. Uh, maybe fire it if we can, depending on the location that we have. So that maybe is an idea for a future video, but for today, it's actually nighttime. This is an unscientific test. I'm sure some people are gonna claim that uh, the one that was maybe closer to this edge or whatever, there was a vortex swirl of high pressure, I, whatever. Guys, I'm just interested in different types of stuff to see if it freezes solid or not. If you left a bottle of lube outside, would you be able to apply it or not, that type of a thing. So the lubes that we're gonna be testing, I've got a few different ones that I just had around the shop and just because I don't have your favorite lube doesn't mean there's a reason, it just, I just don't have it. So to start with, uh, we're gonna use Mobile One 5W30. Now, a lot of guys use this as a lube. I don't necessarily recommend it. I don't know enough about chemistry to tell you that the anti-foaming or bubbling detergents in the motor oil are healthy to breathe in when they, I, I don't know. But I know a lot of guys run it, so we'll include it as part of the test. Uh, we also have some Ezox. This is a really great rust preventative. I don't necessarily use it as a lubricant, but I use it as a rust protector, and it works really good for that. Now, my favorite lubrication is from Slip 2000. So if you think I'm biased, I don't know what to tell you, but this is my favorite. I'm just being honest based on my use. But we have three different types from them. We have their regular gun lube, and we also have two different types of extreme weapons lube. We have the EWL and the EWL 30, the 30 being the 30 weight, which means it's a little thicker, and maybe that will gel or thicken up a little bit more in the cold. I don't know, we're gonna find out. They're both rated to incredibly cold temperatures negative 110, which is pretty impressive, and EWL 30, I'm not finding it on here quickly, so I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time trying to read it, negative 100. I also have some break-free CLP. This is aerosol, I don't have any in the can or in the bottle, I just don't use it anymore. Uh, so Miltech I found laying around. I have an older bottle of Fire Clean. This is a sample I got. Now some people might say that this isn't a fair test towards Fire Clean because Fire Clean does have an expiration date. However, this bottle that I received I don't see an expiration date, but it's gotta be two or three years old, so I don't know for sure. Now, the reason why you see this, and this is I think Walmart or a local grocery store, generic brand vegetable oil, there's a lot of controversy right now over Fire Clean. I'm not a chemist, I'm not gonna claim to analyze their patents or their MSDS sheets to say what it is or isn't, but there's some talk over whether it's just a vegetable oil. It's vegetable based. So nonetheless, I wanted to include vegetable oil maybe to see if there's similarities or differences in the freeze test compared to fire clean. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna write all the names of these on a little cup. 
We're gonna pour a little bit in and then we'll be right back. We have just poured approximately one tablespoon into all of the different types of lubrication into the appropriately labeled cup. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna very carefully place each cup into this container and then this container will be set outside overnight and we'll revisit in the morning. So it is cold. Like I said, negative eight. We'll set this here. Just to make sure it's off the ground and it's not too close to the house or anything like that, I think that'll be good. For those that don't believe how cold it really is, I don't know, can you see that? Oh, yeah. It's cold. All right, let's get back inside. All right, we're back. It's a little bit warmer. Let's see what Weatherbug says. And I also brought a laser thermometer. It's not a super high-end one, but it says two degrees. And I think Weatherbug puts us right about there. So it warmed up uh, about 12 degrees, was it negative? Negative eight, so yeah, about 10 degrees. Uh, but yeah, we'll just do a couple here, two, two, two point two. So we're right at about two degrees above zero, 30 degrees below freezing. So let's take these inside and let's see how they fared. So let's take a detailed look at each of the samples and see what they look like. And we just got in, so where there's no elapsed time or anything like that, they're still pretty cold. Uh, we'll start with the 5W30 and it's still liquid. You can see you can still pour it. And you know if we swab it, we could definitely still apply this, no problem. So the 5W30 passed the cold test, no issues. Uh, Ezox, which again, I'm not a huge, uh, I'm not saying it's a bad gun lubricant or anything like that. I just, uh, you know, I use it mainly as a rust protectant, but it's still very thin, you know, no consistency change at all. You can, you can see that it's pretty, very thin. No issues there. Uh, next is the Slip Gun Lube. Uh, I'm a big fan of Slip products, as you know, so I expect and hope these do well. But the Gun Lube, you know, still is an oil type consistency. Um, I don't know if it's maybe just a hair thicker with the cold, but you know, it's an oil, so it's still very easily applyable. No issues with that. Next is the Extreme Weapons Lube. And again, this is still liquid, still pourable. No issues here. EWL30, which is a thicker lubricant. It's a 30 weight lubricant. So of course we expect it to be thicker. It's thicker on its own. But if we look at this, uh, you can see it's maybe like a, I don't know, maybe a thin honey type consistency, but still easily appliable. You know, no issues with that. Break free CLP is still very liquid, very thin. You know, and this is the aerosol version, so I'm not sure if the uh, pour bottle version would be any different. I seem to recall when I used to use break free stuff that when I would, you know, have the, the bottle, it was a little thicker of a consistency. So maybe there is a little bit different consistency from the aerosol version from the bottle. In fact, I'd almost think there would have to be because there's a propellant in the aerosol version. Uh, the Militech, that thickened up just a little bit. You know, we're at uh, maybe a thin honey type consistency. I think it's just a little thinner than this at normal, you know, room type temperatures. So slightly thickened up. Now the fire clean, uh, not only did it freeze solid, you know, it's, it's solid, but it's also a white. Um, you know, if we can get a close up on that, you can see it, it, it crystallized as well as frosted maybe is the better term. So I'm not sure if that's maybe if there's some water in there or if the vegetation base has water base or anything like that. Now it's been in the, you know, the shop now for a couple of minutes and you can see it's starting to melt on the outside edges, but that center portion is frozen solid and if the bottle would be outside in a, in a squad or a shop 
um, bag or range bag or anything like that, it would be frozen. So frozen and with the vegetable oil, um, now we're starting to thin it up a little bit. And actually just even in the couple minutes that's been in the shop, it's actually thinner and thawed quicker than the fire clean, which is actually kind of interesting how quick the vegetable oil thawed when we were bringing it in, when you saw outside, it was frozen solid, but it was a clear frozen solid. It was actually the same color as it is right there. It didn't change color like the fire clean did. So again, I'm not sure what vegetable based oils the fire clean is based out of or based on. Uh, you could read their chemical patent, stuff like that. And if you understand chemistry better than I do, maybe you have a better idea of it, but it definitely an interesting, interesting test. So by no means was this like truly scientific. And possibly, you know, should we have kept it outside when we did this? Maybe, but uh, it's cold. It's about zero or two degrees out and, uh, you know, talking and everything like that would be a little more difficult with the batteries, the camera and stuff like that. So I hope you found this interesting and educational nonetheless, just to kind of give you an idea of what different lubrications do when the temperatures get really cold. Again, in the future, if we can do a test where we apply different types of lube to a rifle and have that rifle sit outside and freeze, I'll certainly look at doing those as well. If you have any questions about any of the lubes or anything like that, please feel free to leave a comment below. You can learn more about us on the web or Facebook. We really thank you for subscribing to our channel and watching, it's really awesome. So we're looking forward to a really great 2016. And if you're in the Northern States, remember to stay warm, keep training, practice with your cold weather gear. Whenever you shoot, make sure you always shoot safe. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. Hey shooters, if you're looking for high quality pistol and rifle ammunition for your carry, competition, or practice needs, look no further than caparms.com. Manufactured right here in the United States, it is very high quality ammunition that is extremely accurate, reliable, and dependable. Check out their webpage, caparms.com, for more information.